Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet robe. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Miss Kelly Rutherford. I love you. I love you. Listen, if you're starting by loving me, then it could only go down from there, Kelly. So I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's true. It's not I start by loving everyone too. So I get it. Everyone in life starts with a 10 out of 10 and then you just could work your way down. But that means I'm a happy person, right? Yes, we just have to love each other more. It's a good way to start everything. I think so. Now, where I told you I was in New York before we started. Where are you? You're not in the city right now, are you? No, I'm in LA at the moment. I'm in LA, um, which has been great. I've been here for a little while during this whole time, you know, of whatever's going on. So yeah. I was like, that doesn't look like a, your New York apartment that I've seen on Instagram. So no. Well, you know, when I look back at your career, you know, a lot of the early days to me, I was a soap person growing up. So what stands out to me is generations. When you look back at like the, your early career and the soaps, like, does that seem like, okay, that's like yesterday the time has gone fast or are you like, who was that girl? And I, that's all a blur to me. And so it's funny because when people repost pictures from that time or video clips, I mean, I see that girl, but it's so, yeah, it's like, who is that person? It's a different person for sure. It's almost like you can look at her and love her separately from who I am today, you know, like where she was. It's, it's really cool to be able to do it. It's actually a gift sort of to, to do that. Do you see like those early days on generations? Like, did that, you know, like I think soap work is some of the most challenging work in a way, in the sense that, like, is that how you felt about it? Like, do you feel soaps get a bad rap? I mean, I just talked to Anne Hayes recently and she said she would go back to doing a soap like tonight if someone asked her. For me, it was such incredible training. It was such boot camp and to work with a group of people, work with a new director every day. I mean, you know, I came straight out of just studying acting. So there was so much that, you know, just to hit your mark, find your light, memorize an entire script and, and do it every day versus, you know, a TV series, you've got a script every eight days. So it really is such a great training ground, I think, for actors. And, you know, if you can do that, you can do anything. That's kind of and what have I it thought. look good, yeah. Did you always want to be an actress growing up, or were you like on some other path at some point where you know? I think I had so many interests that I had to become an actor. Like I had so many things I wanted to do that I thought the only way I'm going to be able to do this is to play all these parts and to do all, be all these people. You know, I grew up and I loved to watch people. My mother would always say, "Stop staring," and I would just be. In like, why did they pick that shirt? Why did they get that hairstyle? Why did they choose that husband or what? I was always just fascinated by why we do what we do and, and the choices that we all make, you know? That makes a lot of sense. I mean, did you realize when you were on Generations, daytime TV, soap opera, that it was really preparing you for a few years later for entry into the nighttime soap world of Miss Melrose Place? Well, I hoped it would, you know, I was, I was obviously, you know, I've always just loved working. So for me, it was, you know, going from that show to, to um, other shows was just a lot of fun. I mean, Briscoe County Jr., which was like a Western was fun. And then Homefront, which was, you know, set in the 1940s. And I got to play a bartender and this, you know, it was just all these roles to me were just so much fun, regardless of wherever they were, you know. And um, yeah, so this is fun. How did Melrose Place come to you? I mean, you went season five. How, how did that come about? Well, I had done a show for Aaron Spelling called Kindred the Embraced about vampires. And so after I did that show, he offered me a role on, on Melrose Place. I am so good with pop culture. This isn't like tooting my own horn. And I know all these little shows I don't know this show was that on for a while was it on for a minute like I've never heard of it. I think I know I think we went like I don't know how many episodes or if it was a full season I it's again it was a while ago so um wow yeah it was it was good though I'm gonna have to go listen you were before your time vampire diaries I mean that's <laughs> you know I'm gonna have to go find this show now Kelly all right it was good it was fun 
did you, when you were offered the role on Melrose Place by Aaron, like, did you know, cause it was season five, like, did you know, you know, this was a thing, like Melrose was a big thing, whether you were a fan or not, it was a huge show. Oh, it was huge. And I was already friends with Marsha Cross. So it was so exciting to then go on the show and actually work with her. And um, yeah, no, the show was already so established by the time I came on. So you it was know, fun. You came on as, you know, Megan Lewis, the hooker with a heart of gold for lack of a better way to describe her. You were, you know, hired by Marsha Cross, Kimberly, to sleep with Michael because she couldn't sleep with him because she was sick. So like you read this setup, like what was your initial reaction to this character of Megan Lewis? Well, originally there was a role of a lawyer. So originally they reached out to me about a role of a lawyer. And I said, I don't know. I mean, like, I, it just didn't seem like it would be a fun role on Melrose Place to play a lawyer. Like it would have, we could have made it fun. I'm sure it would have been well-written and everything. But so there was another role that was coming up and they said it was this to work with Marsha to play this woman that she introduced, you know, her husband to. And I said, oh, that sounds like so much more fun. And it was with Marsha. So I just, I said, I'd prefer to do that one. So that's kind of how it all came about. Could you tell right away, you know, like talk about, you know, Melrose has had some, we blew up an apartment building. I mean, we had a lot of things going on on Melrose. Like, could you tell right away that Megan was going to be a character that just was meaty and like, you know, was it like love at first sight kind of thing? Oh, I have no idea. You never know, do you? I mean, we can say we think we know, but I, you know, you never know what it's going to be like. And I think the characters evolve and, you know, you never know what the writers are going to write and how then you're going to sort of figure out how to portray that. So it's, it's a real alchemy that happens, I think. And, and uh, yeah, you never quite know. <laughs> you never quite know. What was, I mean, so listen, she was tied to Michael. She was tied to Dr. Brett Cooper, ended up with Ryan McBride. Did you have a favorite love interest, you know, playing? Like, did you prefer one of these three gentlemen? Yeah, I like Thomas. I think Thomas was so much fun. He just was, he, just his sense of comedy. Like he and I really like turned every scene into a, you know, to us, we were doing a comedy everyone else it might have been something else but I loved his comic timing and our relationship was so much fun because he was just you know it was like this sort of our, we were in our own reality of belief and that's what was so fun I think that's what when actors connect in that way it's it's great and it was so believable I thought like Megan and Michael and just the on Michael and off. yeah it was like it was really believable yeah was there, yeah. did you have a favorite storyline? You know, like first you became on as a prostitute, then you worked upstairs at Shooters, you worked at Burns Mancini, you worked at with Lexi Sterling, Amanda Woodward. Megan had quite the career there. Did you have a favorite like storyline of Megan's? Kind of, I mean, I loved all of them. It's again, it's like right now, if I think back and you had me try to come up with all of them, I, there's just, I mean, this was a few days ago, <laughs> just a little while ago. Um, but I love the thing where you kind of found out who she really was, like her mother came on and, and like you found out that she actually came from kind of a nice family and she was just doing this because it was kind of fun for her, which was a nice twist. Um, I thought so, but again, I loved all the scenes with everyone. I was just such a, you know, it was kind of like gossip girl in the sense that it was such a joy to go to work every day and, and to work with everyone was so cool and so fun to work with. 